We're going first to Steve Reisner, founding member of the Coalition for an Ethical Psychology and Psychological Ethics Advisor to Physicians for Human Rights. His latest piece for Slate is called CIA on the Couch, Why There Would Have Been No Torture Without the Psychologists. Well, um, Steve Risen, it's great to have you back on Democracy Now! You also, years ago, ran for president of the APA, and your major plank was to stop involvement with torture. Your campaign, along with many hundreds of psychologists within the APA, has been going on for years. You now say that the torture could not have gone on without your colleagues, the psychologists? Um, unfortunately, yes, that is true. The, uh, the Bush administration's uh, Justice Department created a legal rationale for torture that required the presence of psychologists and medical professionals. And so, on one hand, for legal cover, there had to be psychologists present. On the other hand, and even more horrifying for members of my profession, the uh, the torture regime itself was created at the CIA by these two psychologists, Mitchell and Jessen, and in the Department of Defense, psychologists were involved in creating the torture program and in overseeing it from, from the beginning to the end. Talk about the role of Mitchell and Jessen. These two contractors paid $81 million to come up with these tactics that were used, basically created the program. Well, these two psychologists were sought out by the CIA because the CIA had been uh, had found this uh, manual which they called a resistance manual an al qaeda resistance manual and in it the al qaeda operatives are taught how to handle their imprisonment to not give up too much information so someone had the idea that our own resistance trainers psychologists might have something to say about that manual. This seems to have been an opportunity for Mitchell and Jessen. They were resistance trainers who had been part of a program to basically torture our own soldiers to try to teach them to resist. So the two of them got the manual, they wrote about it, and they claimed that they had special expertise because of their resistance training to break the resistance of Al Qaeda members. Now, when 9 11 struck, the only place where these techniques resided within the, the bowels of the U.S. bureaucracy was in the, the seer doctrine. And so it's quite logical that the CIA turned to two former U.S. Air Force seer trainers and got them to, again, reverse engineer the defensive doctrine into an offensive doctrine using these psychological torture techniques uh, against uh, uh, al-Qaeda and terrorist suspects. The QBARC was the distillation of the CIA's decade of research into the psychological torture techniques. All that work that, first of all, developed a sensory uh, deprivation or sensory disorientation, and then parallel work done by two researchers at Cornell University Medical School, they found that the KGB's most effective torture technique was not brutal beating but self-inflicted pain. And these two basic doctrines of sensory disorientation and self-inflicted pain were encoded in something called the QBARC Counterintelligence Interrogation Manual in 1963. QBARC was then the CIA's cryptonym for itself. So the real title of the manual was the CIA's Counterintelligence Interrogation Manual. And that manual and those techniques were propagated worldwide for the next 30 years among U.S. allies in Latin America, uh, the Middle East, North Africa, Iran, and particularly South Vietnam. Mm -hmm.